Tanshi kiowa, Mara Dishnakashin. Hello everyone, my name is Mara and I work at North Island Métis Association as Program Manager. And I am here today to do a uh, demonstration on how to bead a five petal flower, which is the traditional most well-known flower of the Métis people. Um, the Métis were known as the flower beadwork people and this flower could be seen on many pieces of beadwork or embroidery. And this is a design that I get kids to start off with beading when they're first learning how, um, just so that it's a really great starting place. So how I s I'm going to start is at the center of my flower. Um, what I do is, and what I've been taught, is you start from the center and you work your way out to fill in the center and then you do the outlines of each petal and then fill those in. So to start, I have a size 11 beading needle that has Nymo thread um, on it. It is single threaded, which means I have a short tail and then a long end, but I have not put a knot in the end at this point in time. And I have some size 10 beads as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flip my piece of felt over that has, I've just stapled a piece of paper to it um, with my design and I'm gonna flip it over and as close to the center as possible, I'm going to do a triple back stitch, which I've shown in, a, in another video before, which just means I'm going to take my needle and go in and out of that spot. And I'm gonna leave just a little tail and I'm gonna hold on to it. And then I'm gonna do that two more times. I'm not going completely through my felt or my material, whatever you're going to use. Um, I'm just going through the back layers of it. And so you won't see it on the other side. And it's also not going to leave a big bulge on the beadwork from having a knot. And I'm not going to risk having the knot come through the felt either. So now that it's gone through three times, you can give it a good tug and it's not going anywhere. And now I will come up as close to the center of my flower as I can. And it's okay if you poke a bunch of holes in the paper, no one's going to see those and I'm going to put on one bead. And so I'm going to have this pale color bead in the center of my flower. So I'm gonna pick up one bead and then I'm gonna go back down about one bead's width away from where I came up. And so now my first bead, that my center bead is attached on there. And now I will come up about one bead's width away from my first bead, so you can see about how far away I am. And I'm going to pull my needle all the way, my thread all the way through. And this, I find, is the most difficult part of beading a flower, and it's the most difficult part to teach. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to do it once, slowly, and then I'm going to take the beads off, and I'm going to do it one more time as well, so that you can really get this piece down pat. So I'm going to pick up seven beads. My second, my next circle is going to be the same color. So I'm going to pick up seven beads. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm going to slide those beads all the way down. And so now you can see I've got my one bead in the center and then I've got seven beads. I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to put it through the first bead of those seven just the first one. And I'm gonna point my needle in the direction of the other six beads. And then I'm gonna pull it all the way through. And what will happen is it will form a loop. And then I just put the loop over that center bead and hold it in place with my finger and keep pulling. And it will pull the thread nice and snug. And I'm gonna get another, I'm gonna get a com complete circle of beads out of this. So I'm going to take that off and I'm going to show you one more time and then I will move on to tacking. Okay. So I have my seven beads on and you can see them all separated there. So I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to point it in the direction of the beads and I'm going to pick up just the first bead. And then I will pull it nice and snug. Oops, got the string wrapped around my finger. That will not work so well. Okay, 
So I've pulled it nice and snug. So now I'm going to find where I came up initially, which is here. So I'm going to go back down about one bead's width away. Okay, so now I've got my second circle of beads, but they are loose. So now what you're going to do is called tacking, which means you're going to come up on one side of the thread. You're going to come up between each of the beads on one side of the thread. And then you're going to go back down on the other side. So I've come up on the outside and now I'm going down on the inside. And this is just going to make sure that the thread is held down nice and secure in between each bead. So now you can see those beads are all nice and secure. And if you can't remember where you started, if you just give the beads a poke and they're not staying flat, then you know you've missed a spot and you can go back. Okay, so I've got the first two parts of the center done. And now I'm going to come up one beads width away again. And I'm going to switch my color this time. And I'm going to just pick up six to eight beads at a time at this point, which means I'm not going to complete a full circle. And that's okay. So I'll put seven more beads on. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to line them up. To see where, how far they go. And then at the end, I'm going to just go back down through my material. So now I'm going to work backwards and I'm going to tack down each of those seven beads that I just put on. You can tack down every second bead. However, when I'm going around corners like this in a circle or like up in this part of the flower, I like to tack down every bead. Um, if you choose to tack down every second bead, and a, a place is not laying nicely, you can always go back and add some extra tacks. Um, it's never too late to tack down more. Okay, so now I've gone back to the beginning of those seven beads, and so I'm going to come back up at the back of those beads, and I'm going to go back through all of them again. And that puts me back at the start of the line, and I'm going to add seven more beads on. And then once again, I'm going to line them up and see where they lay. And then I'll go back down through the material and tack them all down again. So this style of beadwork is single needle beading. There is also double needle beading, which I will probably do another video of in the future. And it is beading with two needles. And so you'd have one thread with one needle for picking up your beads and one thread and another needle for tacking down. And it does help to make your beadwork um, lay a little flatter 
it's more time consuming and then you've got an extra needle which if you're not keeping track of they can get swapped around or end up getting misplaced i've had needles fall off okay so now i've tacked all the way back those last seven beads that i added on and instead of coming up at the end of the seven beads i'm going to actually go back two beads farther so i'm gonna be going back through all the last seven beads i just added plus two from the previous batch Okay, and so I'm not going to need a full seven beads here, so I'm going to try three and see how those look. You want to make sure that you don't crowd your beads too much. And so I think three is going to fit nicely in there. If I tried to squeeze a fourth one in, it's going to make the beadwork bulge a little bit in places. Um, I always try to keep in mind that you, your beads want to be able to breathe. If you try and put too many in, which I've sometimes done because I don't want the back to show, then the beadwork doesn't lay flat and it doesn't look as nice. So I'm just going to leave it at three. And so now I'm going to go through two of the first, the first two beads that I put on of that circle and then go back down through the material. And then I'll tack down those last three beads. And then I'm going to come back up through the material, a couple beads back from those three. And I'm going to try and go through all of the beads on this circle at least once more. If you can go through your beads again one or two more times, it's just going to pull that circle together a little bit nicer and it'll hold its shape a bit better. I will sometimes if the beads are a little bit smaller and the thread the needle doesn't want to go through them again i will sometimes swap out for a smaller needle just so that i can go through them one or two more times and if at any point in time you're beading and you realize you've put on too many beads you can use a pair of pliers and i'm not going to do it right now because I don't have too many beads on here. But if you're going to use pliers, make sure to put your needle through the bead and then snip it. If you don't put a needle through it first, when you snip the bead with the small pliers, you risk severing the thread and then your beadwork is going to fall apart and you don't want that. So always make sure your needle goes through the bead first that you're going to cut. So I've gone through as many times as this is going to allow me to. It's getting really sticky. And if you force it too much um, your beads will break um, so I'm gonna go back down through the material and then I'll be ready to move on to my next my last ring around the center but I'm just going to continue that same method add seven beads tack them down go back through the beads and add seven more on tack them backwards go through seven plus two just like I did on that last row. Um, so if you need to, just rewind the video um, and play it back, and you should be able to continue your flower. So once I'm finished this first, this last row around the center, then I'm going to start beading the petals. So I will do the same thing, seven beads at a time, go forward, tack back, go forward, tack back, go forward, tack back, and I'm going to outline every single petal first, and then I will fill it in. And you've got choices whether you want to do all of the petals 
in a curve, which is more traditionally Métis, but you could also bead straight across or up and down, whatever you would like. And it was very common in Métis beadwork to swap out colors every two rows. Um, so you'd have one color on the outer two rows and then you'd swap to a different color on the next row. Um, you could also accent the tips of the petals with a metallic color bead or a contrasting bead, which is also very common in Métis art. But other than that, that is the basics for how to bead. Um, just really simple. Um, if you have any questions, you can f please feel free to reach out. Uh, you can check out a brochure on beadwork on our website, www.nimetis.com. Um, and we also have many groups, and if you want to learn more, please feel free to contact us, um, and you can come out and learn. Uh, Kawapamatin Mina, see you all again soon. Merci for watching.